this is a fun hack and slash RPG platformers type game that I've been meaning to play for years. It's an action adventure title. It's a mixed bag of things. It doesn't stick to any one thing too much. Dark Souls. Medieval is a good little game that doesn't overstay its welcome. It's charming and fun, and it wants you to have a good time. The story goes, Daniel Fortescue was a knight captain and a king's champion in the 1200s, who led a militia against the evil sorcerer Zerok, who used to be a court wizard loyal to the king. The legend says that he slayed Zerok, but in truth, his militia and the other heroes of the land defeated Zerok's army without him, and Sir Dan fell to an arrow in the eye in the first charge, and he never got to truly be a hero. Now, a hundred years later, Zerok returns with a new batch of spells and a new army, and after returning the dead to life, Fortescue is given another chance to fulfill his destiny and put Zerok down for good. As far as night stories go, it's pretty basic, but it's also pretty good. It's about all you need for a game like this, and who can really resist the hero's journey? Visually, the game has its charms. It's certainly going for cartoony, and it carries a goofy-looking nature. But sometimes, it's also kind of creepy. Genuinely. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. You get that vibe. I should note that part of this is because the game is very dark, and my capture came out way brighter than the game actually is. I prefer it being darker, and I feel like they could have gone farther with the horror aspect. I feel that it would have been stronger as a whole, but I also feel like they were trying to retain enough balance for it to remain aptly in the kids game category. As far as sound design goes, the game fits the bill but doesn't ever exceed expectations. I will say there's one exception here, and that's the voice acting. Even for a PS1 game, never at any point does the voice acting sound bad, and that's a huge achievement for the time. I can't stress that enough. There isn't much else to talk about as far as the sound design, so moving right along, we'll talk about the controls. The controls suck. If you want to block with triangle and swing with X at the same time, you have to use the claw. The camera also sucks. This game is very clunky. You sprint off ledges on accident a lot. It features so much platforming, but doesn't have a double jump, leading to a lot of instant death. This holds the game back, seeing as the difficulty of the game hinges on this almost entirely. In later levels, the only thing preventing you from being unstoppable are all the dang ledges. The game has a lot of replayability at its core. It's designed around the idea that you can return to a level at any time. The crux of this is in how, if you start a level, you have exactly the same health and items as the previous levels. This kind of forces you to backtrack, but that's not a terrible. I personally played through this game with a guide written in 1999, I guess, to get through it quick. And I can tell that hindered my experience of exploring things and retrying levels out. It wants you to go back and try things a little different or look around. And it is, like I said earlier, a hack and slash type game with Dan swinging and sword violating things. You press or hold square for your secondary attack. There's so many different weapons with different functions in this game that are super well designed. Hardly any of them become obsolete as you get new ones. There's a lot of unlocks, too. If you're a completionist, you're gonna love your rewards. I 100% of this game. I don't 100% a lot of games, unfortunately, but this is due to how short it is and how easy it is to get everything. All in all, I can see why people want this game to get redone. It's charming, it's fun, it's short and sweet, and its major offenses are things that can be fixed in a remake. Though, it kinda already got one on PSP, and I know nothing about that version. It's too bad that rumors going around right now are saying that none of these things got fixed in the PS4 version. I guess sometimes you can be a little too faithful to the original. But at least if you want to play it, it's brand new on PS4, only $30, and the original PS1 version is going for that much on Amazon right now. But you can wait like a week after release and buy this second hand from someone who beat it in a day for like 20 bucks. I know I released a review like less than a week ago, uh, but this is just a little tiny retrospective I wanted to get out done before Halloween. Hopefully you guys like this little short, tiny little review type thing. But I also felt now was a good time to tell everybody that I have a Patreon and a coffee that you can donate to or subscribe to. If you want me to do more stuff more often, this will be a good way to support me and it will really help me put more stuff out. And I want to say as always, thank you for watching. There's only like 10 of you subscribed to my channel right now and that's a lot more people than I already thought I was going to get. So I really appreciate it. and. I'll see you in the next one.